In this video, I'll show you how to create your own exact equations so that you can go around and show off. Or maybe if you're a teacher, you can put this on a test or something. And the only thing that you need is a function of x and y. So you don't need to spend any money, okay? And the final time today is coming, so you know what to do. Anyway, suppose we have the function f of x, y is equal to y times e to the x squared and the minus ln y. And now, let me put this down right here. And you really have to remember the connection between exact equation and the total differential. We are going to first look at this function, and then remember, we have to do the partial derivative, right? First, we will do the partial of f with respect to x. As we can see, we only have e to the x squared right here. This is the only function part, and the rest are the constant in the x world. Anyways, let's go ahead and differentiate this right here. So, you see that y is a constant in the x world, so let's put down the y first. Let me write it down here. And we have to differentiate e to the x squared. Well, first we repeat that, e to the x squared. However, the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So let's put that down in the front, like that. And the derivative of minus ln y in the x world is just 0, because this is technically a constant. So we are done. This is the partial of f with respect to x. And we can put this in a parentheses and say this is dx. Continue. We add. We have to put down the partial of f with respect to y. Let's look at this term. We have y times e to the x squared. y is the function, right? So we have to differentiate y to the first power. The derivative of y to the first power in the y world is just 1. That means this stays only. We have e to the x squared. And we also have to differentiate minus ln y, which is going to give us minus 1 over y. Okay? And this is the partial of f with respect to y. So it deserves me to put down the y like this. And we make this equal to 0. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is an exact equation for you. Anyways, suppose you are a student and this is what you have to solve on the test. How can we go from here back to there? Alright, now let's not look at this right here. This is the deal. First, you have to check for exactness. And I have a video for you guys already. You can watch that for review if you would like. And let's say we have checked it. This is indeed exact, okay? Let me skip that step right here. We know this is exact already after the check. That means this right here, you know it is going to be partial of f with respect to x. And this right here is going to be the partial of f with respect to y. Be sure this and that match, this and that match, right? And here is what you can do. You can start with this, or you can start with that. Up to you. About, you know, 99% of the time, people will just go from here and start with that. So in this video, I will show you guys how to start with partial of f with respect to y. Just to emphasize, either way you start off with, you end up with the same answer anyways. So let me write this down. We know partial of f, there's such a function, right? And you know these are the partial derivative. This right here is respect to y. Let me make this equal to e to the x squared minus 1 over y. And our goal is to figure out what that capital F is. All right, now, this is the partial derivative. What we are going to do is just integrate both sides. Be careful, we have to integrate both sides with respect to y, okay? So right here, we will get the f on the left-hand side. You don't have to worry about the plus c yet or the constant, however, this is equal to integral of e to the x squared in the y world. It's pretty easy, because we just have to put a y like this. y, and then that's the constant right in the y world, so e to the x squared, just like that. Next, we have to integrate minus 1 over y, and that's going to give us minus ln absolute value of y. Right? That's in the y world, so ln absolute value of y, put down the minus. And we have to add a constant now. However, you know f is a function that involves both x and y. And in the y world, x was considered to be a constant. So I have to add not just a c, but rather a function in terms of x. Okay, so I will write it down as little f of x. This right here is considered to be the constant in the y world. It may be just a number, it may be some number with x and things like that, but I don't know yet. Let me just write it down as f of x, like that. 
Well, how can I figure out what this f of x is? Because if I can figure it out, I'm done, isn't it? Hmm. So what I'm gonna do next is I would like to just look at this right here. This is the f, the general form, right? I have to match with this, isn't it? This right here tells us when we have the partial of f with respect to x, we must end up with that. So in order for me to make a connection, I have to look at this right here, and then we'll do the partial with respect to x now. Let's put this down on both sides. So that on the left hand side, you will see this is the partial of f with respect to x, and this is equal to, now let's just go to the partial derivative for each term. For the first term, we have y as a constant in the x world, so let's put that down. And we have to differentiate e to the x squared, we first repeat that, and because of the chain rule, we multiply by 2x right here, right? And when we differentiate, when we do the partial with respect to x, and here is minus l and y, this is the constant, so it gets zero. And that's pretty much, you know, nothing there. But when we differentiate with respect to x with this, I will just write down plus f prime of x. That's the derivative of little f. Well, this right here, I must have, so let me set this equal to whatever I have over there, okay? So I must set this equal to this, which is 2xy e to the x squared. And now you can see this and that match. What does f prime of x has to be? Well, from here, there's nothing here, right? So you know, you can say this is just has to be zero. So we must have, let me write it down. We must have f prime of x equals to zero because there's nothing here. And now I still have to figure out what's f prime of x, right? So I have to integrate both sides. This time we're integrating with respect to just x because f, right, little f is a function of only x. So let's do that with respect to x. On the left hand side, we get f of x. On the right hand side, the integral of zero in the x world is just an innocent constant, c. It has nothing to do with y because f of x, this right here, we're just talking about x as the variable, there's no y at all. Earlier, when we do this, right here, capital F, it involves both x and y, so be careful with that. And we are done. As you can see, f of x, y, which is that, and you know f of x is c, so I can put this down for you guys as right here, f of x, y, which is this, y e to the x squared minus ln absolute value of y, and we just add a constant right here, okay? And here's another deal. You want to write a solution for this, right? We put on the function part on the left hand side, and we put out the constant on the right hand side. So let's do that. So the solution for that will be y e to the x squared minus ln absolute value of y, and we make this equal to the constant, and this is the general form for it, okay? So earlier I should have labeled this as c1, and if you don't want to do that earlier, uh, you can just present this for the final answer. It doesn't matter that much in my opinion. But anyways, this is it. And you may be wondering, how can we have the absolute value? Well, for the general solution, we should have put this right here. However, if the question gave us an initial value, then the things are going to be different. Let me show you. Suppose we have this exact equation along with the initial value that say y of zero is equal to negative one. And you know the usual deal. This right here tells us that when x is equal to zero, y will be negative one, right? So now let's plug in these values in here so we can solve for c. Negative one into y, and then we multiply by e, and the x is equal to zero, and we have to square that, and then we minus ln absolute value of negative one. This will give us the c value. And now let's check this out. Zero squared is zero, e to the zero's power is just one, so this is just negative one. And then negative one in the absolute value is positive one, ln of positive 1 is 0, so this is gone. So we have negative 1 is equal to c, like this. That's all, right? And now we can just plug in negative 1 into this c, and we'll have the answer, y times e to the x squared minus ln, and let me put down the absolute for you for now. And then we have the y inside. 
and this is equal to the C which is negative 1 and this is what we have however this is not good because this is not continuous keep in mind the solution to a differential equation it has to be a continuous curve and the trouble is because we have the ln with the absolute value of y and in fact I have mentioned a similar situation in the past you can check out the link down below in the description okay so what we're going to do is well we have to take out the absolute value but when I take out the absolute value y cannot be negative 1 anymore if I plug in negative 1 in here then you know ln of negative 1 is not defined right so in fact what we will do is we took out the absolute value and we change that to a minus y like this and this right here is the solution so what I did earlier was this idea so let me write it down again whenever you have ln absolute value of y pay attention to what y value you have be sure the solution has to be continuous on the interval that we are talking about especially when you have the y values the initial values right here as well anyways this right here you have two situations first you can look at this as ln with just y or the second situation is ln and you can have this as negative y like this it's pretty much the definition of absolute value in terms of a piecewise function on the top here this is good when y is greater than zero and this right here is good when y is less than zero so that's why I changed the absolute value of y into parentheses negative y because we saw that y was negative 1 so you must have this right here for the final answer 